Hello educators. In this video lesson, video lesson 2D, where we'll be focusing on some of our most successful learning activities in math, we're going to be taking a look at what we call student self-assessments and grade conferences. This isn't something we do every day or every week. We only do it eight times a year before each progress report or report card grade comes out. But in short, we have our students self-assess themselves and determine what they think their own grade should be in math class. They gather evidence, they prepare this in a self-assessment, and then they present that case to us as teachers at a grade conference. Um, this video is kind of going to go through the process of why we love this activity, why we think it's a great way for students to really take stock of what's going well, what should I be proud of, and what are the things, that, or one thing we usually focus on, maybe two things, that the student needs to do better to learn even more in math class. Um, so we're going to take a look at how this all works, and we're going to start by taking a look at the slide that we kind of showed students at the beginning when we first did this activity. So when we first launched this activity, if probably four weeks into school before progress reports, we kind of helped students just give an overview of why we were doing this. We let students know that our focus in math class would be on learning this year and not on grading them on each little thing they did. Um, we help students understand that the way we've built grades in math is they're going to grade themselves and we're going to see if that's fair as well as teachers. But the grade is going to be based half on their effort, just how consistently they're trying, mostly in class and a little bit based on their homework expectation. And then also the other half of the grade is based on if I'm trying really hard, we should be seeing growth that you're getting stronger in certain math skills. And also really part of the grade is also going to be for that second half, the proficiency. If you've been trying hard, if you're growing, are you able to actually do the eighth grade math skills we've been practicing? So we do take some time to explain to students why we're doing this, what proficiency really means, and why that has to be a little piece of our grade in addition to the effort. And then what happens is students now have a few days to create their self-assessment and evidence and to also sign up for the grade conference that week. So first thing we'll talk about is the process for signing up for grade conferences. Um, we use Google Calendar to facilitate that and set up meetings in the afternoon for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes with these students. And simply, this is what it would look like for the students. They click a link, and it gets them over towards Google Calendar. And i got to go back a few weeks to when these were being scheduled. But then you would see the students could see some blocks are already taken by different students. Those are the blue ones, and as the student clicks in, they can pick any open time slot by selecting it. Here's the days up here and the rows show us the different times, so the student can find a time they like that's open, click on that date, and save it. And this makes it easy to facilitate for us as educators. We can see on our Google Calendar all the kids who signed up for a conference that day, and then send them a quick email at the end of class that just lists them all and says, hey, reminder, you have a great conference today. Here's the Zoom link. Now, as we take a look at the self-assessment, the self-assessment that we have students fill out, we run through Google Classroom. That's not going to be in this view only our main math materials document. Instead, we link to that because it's a make a copy assignment so each student can type their own slide deck or their own self-assessment and evidence piece. So that link to Classroom you see is here for each of the classes. And when they click on that link, it simply takes them to Google Classroom so they can open their own copy of the self-assessment and grade conference, which we'll now look at. For that self-assessment and grade conference when they open it up, the first page, the first slide is just a cover slide. It gives them a link to that Google Calendar again so that they can sign up for a conference if they hadn't done it yet. And they can also record their name and some of the information about their grade conference. The main stuff that students are supposed to prepare before the grade conference, and we can of course work through them at the grade conference if this isn't fully filled out, is page two is their self-assessment, this purple background, and page three is kind of a blank template where students can draw pictures with evidence of some of their math work and also write statements, what we call declarations, where the students actually declare to us, this is some of the work you know I'm doing that supports my self-assessment above. So we tell students to start with the self-assessment and then to try to add evidence, whether it's statements or pictures of some of their scores, to support that self-assessment after they've completed it. And what happens is students get to drag these dots and these stars. So you see these blue stars, sorry, green stars in the blue circles. And originally they would have all been lined up over here. And it was the student's job to go ahead and drag those to where they felt was appropriate based on their work. 
So what's nice is this really after students do this is it facilitates our grade conference discussion. We start by talking about the great stuff, which parts of class do students think they're doing best in. And then it naturally flows. Students are pretty honest. Even if they rate themselves, this student does put in great effort. But even if they push everything a little too high, they almost always put the thing, the one or two things that they should be doing better on as a lower rating. And it naturally helps us get into that discussion. But of course, we always, regardless of the student, we try to highlight in the beginning to help the student be open in the conference, the things that actually are going best for them. And we always start with the effort and we talk about the effort most of the time, to be honest. We say that's really the key to getting your growth and proficiency. So the students would rate those stars as well. And as we're having this discussion, we kind of tab back and forth, the student and us, between the evidence that supports some of these ratings. Now the written statements, their effort scores, we kind of know that as a teacher. We already know before that conference if that kid is with us every day typing in answers in our breakout slides. If they're on the Pear Deck, we see their name, we see them clicking in answers. And if their IXL and Khan Academy work is good, we see that data too throughout the semester. But it's very important that the students actually evaluate themselves rather than us telling them what they're doing because it's a much, much different process for the student's brain when they first evaluate themselves. So we do teach a lot of this in the first grade conferences. We're teaching students how to take screenshots again because some of the directions are pretty advanced for them even though we put some of the directions here to help them. The grade conferences, the first couple times is us showing them how to go to Khan Academy and IXL and pull some of the things like all the assignments they're completing on IXL or the scores they're getting on Khan Academy and include that data. So this is the stuff we would be looking at as teachers anyways to decide what their grade is. And, and and to be honest, it's, it's a great, great way that's not really more time consuming than doing grades throughout the year and actually has students having the metacognition, the awareness of why their grade is what it is, what they should be proud of, and what they should be doing better on. Now the last slide, this yellow slide you see here, is what we use to facilitate the discussion and take a, capture our notes towards the end. We kind of build it the same every time. We have one bullet point, a couple sentences that highlight or summarize the effort based on what we discussed for the 10 minutes. And then the same thing for proficiency. Talk about what's great. If there's anything that needs to go better, we tend to put that towards the end. And then always for every student, we always focus on just trying to come up with one specific area for improvement. Occasionally the student will not pick what I think is the obvious area for improvement. Like this student, for example, they said volunteering answers and ideas more in class when they already do that a bit, and I'm not as worried about that. And for this student, I did kind of add the IXL one because I said, you know what, that's really, in my opinion, their biggest area for improvement. So sometimes we do end up at two, but that's really only if the student picks something that I don't think is super important compared to something else that is a higher leverage area for improvement. But again, trying to focus that on just one or at most two things that the student could think about doing better the next five weeks before we meet again for the next grade. And then before the conference, the student was really supposed to have graded themselves what they think their grade would be if they were just putting the report card grade in on their own. And then at the end of the conference, we see usually the students kind of have the same ratings, but sometimes they change their minds. So we have the students put that in first, and then we use parentheticals here to kind of note if we agree or disagree. And surprisingly for most students, we don't usually have a situation where they're rating themselves too highly. It happens occasionally. But if anything, we usually more often run into a student who's too modest or maybe too scared to ask for full credit for the grade that we think they might deserve. Um, but again, it, it's a pretty pleasant surprise to see how fairly students tend to assess themselves and how often they already have the same grade that you would have probably been putting for them based on what you've seen and the data that you have. Um, if you do have any questions about this process, if you have ideas, please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is ddoherty3 at bostonpublicschools.org. Um, and I should have highlighted ahead of time, I'm going to go ahead and use my drawing tool, a few people that I think um, would have been awesome resources that I borrowed from. I'm going to actually use Google. Um, one of them is a woman named Jennifer Gonzalez on Twitter. Oh, and go figure. It's not even the first one I wanted. So I'm sorry this is going long. You can feel free to ignore me, shut the video off at this point. But these are a few of the teachers who I've found to be fantastic resources for some of the self-assessment stuff. Um, one of them who I got a lot of these ideas from was the Jennifer Gonzalez we were trying to get. 
Um, and she has an amazing blog called Cult of Pedagogy. So I would t totally recommend if you're into some of this stuff. She touches on a lot of this metacognition stuff. And there's one other group with quite a few people. Um, and they're TG2Chat. Um, the handle on Twitter is TG2Chat. And the TG2 or TG squared really just stands for Teachers Going Gradeless. And it's a whole community of teachers who have really moved in this direction of self-assessments and moving away from grades and more towards students evaluating themselves based on their learning instead of teachers putting in a bunch of grades in the grade book. So I think those people are fantastic resources. Um, if you know of other people who are doing great work in this area, please, please feel free to tell me. Again, D. Doherty 3 at Boston Public Schools is how you can get a hold of me. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Sorry that it went a little long as usual.